congratulations, Nick. Hey, thank you for uh, speaking with us. Oh, no problem. Thank you for taking the time. Um, so anyways, uh, so I understand that you are a, an editor in the industry. Yep, that's right. Yeah, I'm in Toronto and I've been editing for the last few years. It's been like five, seven years, yeah. What, what got you uh, interested or your start into this industry? Um, well, I think as a kid, I was always into animation. So actually my first uh, passion was animation. And, you know, growing up on Disney films and Miyazaki films and, uh, you know, claymation. So everything animation. And then I think slowly in high school, I kind of just felt uh, more interested in the storytelling rather than just the animation. And uh, that kind of led me to film school. And then um, I got an internship at Degrassi, which uh, kind of really helped me learn everything about production. And uh, they let me uh, film these behind the scenes videos on the making of Degrassi. And I, you know, filmed and I edited all that stuff. And it was kind of just editing uh, those behind the scenes and creating stories out of something that is very loosely based on an idea is kind of what made me really interested in editing. And, uh, and then I started uh, assistant editing there and then, you know, worked my way up to editor. Now, Degrassi is what, a, a comedy show? Degrassi is a teen uh, show. It takes place in high school. Um, and it's just all about, you know, everything kids get into. So things like drugs or like, you know, uh, school shootings. Um, it's, it's also the show where, uh, Drake got his first, uh, start. He played Jimmy Brooks and, uh, he was a student, uh, at Degrassi and he, he was actually a person who was a victim of a school shooting. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. So on, on a show like this, is there like a specific approach that you had to use for editing? Uh, I think for me, for editing, it's always, um, it's always based on the emotion. So, uh, so whenever I'm watching the dailies, which is the raw footage every day, and like when I first start on a scene, it's, it's watching the dailies and just paying attention to uh, how I feel. And if those feelings match what the intention is, um, then that's a good sign. Um, I always have to go back to the script and just reread that scene, just find out what you know the whole point of it is and just try to make those emotions match. You know, for, for a lot of us, um, editing sounds kind of a, a tedious and boring task. Could, <laughs> could you, could you uh, describe a, a typical day on a job like uh, editing here? Editing definitely does take a lot of patience. It, it takes a long time, but uh, I think with my background with animation, um, editing is actually not too bad compared to animation. Um, but it is, um, so for a typical day on a TV show, you would get, um, a couple scenes a day, depending on how they shoot it, but it's typically like three or four scenes a day. And, um, you, yeah, you, you, you spend a lot of time watching the footage over and over again and analyzing every single line. Like people in the hallway get really annoyed because they hear the same line over and over again if we have our speakers loud. So. Um, but it, it's, it's something that I don't even notice anymore. Like I don't even notice the repetitiveness of, of something if I watch it over and over again. So you don't have to do anything special to keep yourself sane. <laughs> no, not really. I, I actually, I, you know, really enjoy, um, I mean, it depends. Like, I guess there are some scenes where it's, uh, you know, some things are just not working. It's like maybe the performance isn't there or like, and, and it is difficult uh, to try to get that to work, but um, it's, it's part of the job. And, and when it's finally done and, and you see the results of it, it's rewarding. That's, that's actually kind of funny because I've, I've been on set to watch uh, them film scenes by directors and they do like 10, 20 takes and I already bo bored of that. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, yeah, if I have to, like definitely I would try to watch everything, like even on circle takes. 
uh, but sometimes the schedule is just really fast and it's uh, it, it's hard to to do all that work at you know in a in a short period of time. Um, let, let, let me. I, I have more questions about editing, but let me talk about some of some of your other projects that you have yeah. done in the past. Um, first of all, I think you did the what, Killjoys and Dark Matter. Those are what sci sci fi. Sci yeah, both of them. Shows. Yeah, both of them are on uh, sci-fi, and they're both sci-fi shows. They and they both have a similar tone. It's it's action adventure, and there's definitely a humor uh, element to it. Did did you have to go with a different approach uh, for for those shows? Um, those shows, um, I, I guess, it also depends on the scene. Um, but in, in generally, um, I I still go based on on my regular way of working and it, it's based on you know the performances the emotions um uh you know for each scene and then uh when you actually put those scenes together when you put the uh the whole show together uh you just um kind of have to make sure the stories are working and and you look at the big picture if if the story arcs are working if you're following the characters um uh, but the, I guess the different thing about Killjoys and Dark Matter is there is action, which is always fun. And, and uh, yeah, you, you're playing around with uh, music and sound effects and, uh, you know, space battle. There's more VFX, which is uh, another element that's uh, different. That's, a, that's my, very mighty uh, curious is because with action scenes, does it make it easier or harder to edit? Uh, for me, I, I think action is easier just because um, with the nature of editing, you're trying to hide cuts. And one of the great ways of hiding it is on action. You, you always cut on action. Um, so I find that uh, it, the edits are seamless when you, you cut, it at, cut action scenes because there's always you know, something moving. Uh, with dialogue scenes, I, I do find it a bit challenging because you, you're working more with the pace of it, and um, it, um, it might be a bit more subjective with with how people, you know, emotionally connect to it in in a more dialogue heavy scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Now you also have some uh, more recent uh, shows, like uh, I believe what Baroness von Sketch show, yeah. and that's a that's completely a comedy uh, from, from yeah from the title I I've, I've gathered. Yeah, it's it's a it's a comedy sketch show, and each each um, episode contains like maybe like twenty skits, ten to twenty skits, um, or not skits uh, sketches, and. Um, yeah, that one's that one's a, a very different process because there's there's a lot of improv uh, involved. So um, for a sketch, you get like an hour and a half of footage, but the sketch is only like two minutes or thirty seconds, uh, and you really have to um, cut it down. But it, it's hard because a lot of it's really funny. Um, but it it is. Um, I think it's a matter of guiding guiding some of uh, the jokes back to uh, what the punchline is meant to be because some of the improv could kind of just go off on a tangent. You kind of have to bring them back in. That sounds uh, pretty difficult to uh, to take, what, 90 minutes of footage to pare it down to two, two minutes. I mean... I mean, you you as an editor, you don't you don't ultimately make the decision, right? The a director makes that decision. Yeah. So um, I do the editor's uh, assembly of of a sketch first, and then I work with the director, and uh, that's that's a whole different process too, because we're we have this base to work off of, uh, but we're we're always looking back at the the dailies, and we're trying to find if there's any other little moments that that might work in it. Um, so it's it's always evolving, and then after the director's stage, there's also the producer's uh, cut stage, where where I work with the producers, and again we make a few adjustments to it. Going going back to um, to something that I wanted to cover is uh, because you being in an edit bay itself, 
Um, I'm assuming that the director is always next to you and, and there's now also producers that are also in the room or something like that wa watching it. So basically you are the one that's actually doing all the controls. Right. Yeah. So, um, so while they're filming, um, I'm actually getting the dailies as they're filming. So, uh, so the director would be on set, um, for the first part of it while I'm editing. So I actually get a period of time where I'm editing by myself. Uh, wow. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's actually pretty, pretty amazing. Now, um, you, you also have been doing a, I believe, sort of like a teen, another teen show called Utopia Falls. Yeah. Could you talk more about that show? Yeah, so Utopia Falls is um, another teen sci-fi show, um, but there's also a, an element of music um, to it, uh, specifically hip hop. And uh, it takes place in a post-apocalyptic world uh, where this society has kind of um, hidden uh, a certain culture um, and, it, and a group of kids start to discover uh, this thing, which is hip hop. Um, and they use it um, to spark a revolution, basically. They, they find out the government is keeping secrets from them and and it's them, you know, finding out the truth. Now, incorporating music, uh, editing music into something um, like this, especially something more specific, is is that a difficult task or also pretty easy? It, it is. Um, they, there's like um, different things to think about because um, it's it's music, and then there's dance in there too. So. Um, one of the challenges is with episodes, they s usually go longer and uh, we have to always cut it back to time. Um, and, and sometimes it's, it's cutting out verses out of a song. Um, so you do have to figure out um, what's the best way, like what's the best verse to cut out. Because um, it does have to be seamless. With, with music, there's musical phrasing that you have to be aware of. Um, so, so there's challenges that way. Wow, excellent. Now, um, I've noticed of basically all the ones that I have listed are television shows or streaming um, shows. Is, mm. that, uh, is that something you just tend to gravitate towards or is that what's usually just offered on, onto your plate? I, I think it's usually what's um, available. Uh, I guess here in Toronto, there, there's definitely more TV shows uh, than movies. Um, and... Um, I think with movies, it's really about you having that relationship with the director. Um, and, and I guess there's just few of that here, uh, of, of, you know, uh, directors being able to, to work on bigger features. Um, but um, yeah, I, I enjoy TV a lot. Um, there, there's a big variety of, of stuff to work on. Is, is that usually the end goal, goal for like a lot of, uh editors is to get into a, a specific relationship with the specific director and just being brought on to all their projects? <laughs> I, I guess, uh, I guess that would be nice. Um, especially if, uh, uh, you like the director, but I think that's where it sparks from. You have to, you know, uh, find someone you really work well with, uh, that you trust and they trust you. And, and that would be the dream is, is if you have this relationship and, you both, you know, are making uh, projects that you're really into. On since you do like a TV series, um, quite quite a bit. Are you typically the only editor, or do they typically have basically a staff of editors that they cycle around? They usually have about three editors, uh, two to three editors for a, a TV show, and um, yeah, the episodes are kind of uh, divided amongst the editors. But we each are in charge of in charge of one whole episode, um, so we don't cut scenes um, within uh, the same episodes. Wow, that sounds great! Now, before I forget, uh, when uh, when you sent you sent me a pitch letter to talk to you, you uh, you also sent me a short film called "The Beacons of Gondor." Now, that's yeah. a that's an independent short film. I mean, how how did you uh, got involved with that one? Uh, yeah, so that one's fun because I I know all the people uh, uh, in in the show. Like it's it's just a group of friends um, that uh, 
uh, I met from Degrassi, they're actually, uh, most of them had a part on Degrassi. And so they started this uh, comedy uh, sketch group. And so they've been doing a few different shorts. And this particular one was uh, a Lord of the Rings parody. And um, they just, they, I think I was at a, uh, an awards event or, or some kind of film festival and I bumped into one of them and they were working on this project and they were really having trouble with this one because there was just so much footage. And uh, yeah, we had a meeting, they showed me some stills of it, they showed me uh, the scripts and it just seemed like a really fun short thing to work on. So I, I was, yeah, I was so happy to work on it. Yeah, it's a, it's it's pretty funny because the reason why I sparked my attention is because your short film is going to film uh, or show at the uh, Gen Gen Con, which is now a free online event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess this year, well, because of COVID, it's it's moved online, and so the film festival is uh, is going to be online as well. Yeah, I the the reason why I thought it was kind of ironic was because I I used to be a volunteer staffer for that convention for 10 years. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a while ago, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty hard task to uh, manage, uh, you know, 75,000 attendees, I'll tell you Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a huge event. So um, yeah, I, I wonder how this online event is gonna be received. Yeah, so, um, so if people wanted to get into editing, um, as a career, I mean, how, how do people get into, uh, you know, their foot through the door into something like this? Is it, is it just mainly through film school? No, I think, um, I think it would be good to reach out to editors, um, that are in the community. Um, like one of the routes that a lot of people do is, um, assist, uh, assist in editing. And then, uh, you know, you develop a relationship with editors and, and, and sometimes they'll give you a chance to edit a scene and, and slowly you, you kind of move up that way. Um, but other people, you know, just edit a lot of short films. Like they, um, they love doing it and, and a film gets, uh, you know, very popular and uh, they get a name for themselves and, and then they you know, start editing features. And so it takes a lot of luck, but I think, I think if you're passionate about it, then, you know, you have a, a big leg up already. I didn't know that editors have their own their own community. I mean, that's a that, that's a pretty good sense about. Uh, I guess everybody has their own community, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, definitely um, you know. There's uh, like in Canada, we have uh, the Canadian Cinema Editors, which is um, very similar to the American Cinema Editors, and it's just an organization to promote editing and uh, educate others about editing and about the craft. And um, I know it's a silly thing to ask during this pandemic season, but uh, you, 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 are, you, are you working on a lot of projects your, yourselves? So, so the thing with editing, like the great thing about editing is we're all kind of quarantined anyways. Um, so we could continue to work from home. But the problem is if filming doesn't happen, then we don't have anything to edit. So, so the productions um, that we're going to start up that I was going to be on is, is on hold. Um, and there's talks about it starting up again uh, mid to late August, um, which has already been pushed back because I think they said uh, late July. But um, uh, so we'll, we'll have to see about that. But the, the previous show that I worked on, um, The Expanse, the great thing was they finished shooting right before the pandemic started. So now we're fully in post and, and you know, everyone could do post from home. So the sound team is working from home and the VFX team is working from home. And uh, whenever we have uh, spotting sessions, we're doing it online with Zoom. Uh, so so it's, it's great that we're finding ways of, of working around that. I've, I'm curious about your workspace at home because I've been in an edit bay room before and that's a, and I see like a lot of constro controls. I see this big screen and everything like that. Yeah. Um, did, did you have to create a special workspace or just working from a, 
you know, a desktop or a laptop? I'm, I'm pretty minimalist. Um, I like even um, when I set up my workstation at work, it's, it's just, I have two monitors and I have a, a bigger client monitor and of course speakers and uh, the essential like keyboard, mouse, everything. But um, at home, it's, it's kind of a similar setup. It's two monitors. Um, um, uh, I, I definitely don't have, um, it's not as, as complex as at work. Uh, Cause it's also my just regular computer. Um, but it, it's pretty simple. Excellent. Excellent. And, um, and as I'm starting to wrap things up, did, did you want to stay in this field for, uh, for a very long time or do you want to start diverging into something? Because I know uh, I've talked to a few editors before and a lot of them want to get into directing. Is, mm -hmm. it, is that, is that, is that a goal down the road or you really enjoy the editing world? I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I think I wanted to direct first before editing, but like now that I'm editing, I, I really enjoy it. And, uh, I think for at least the next couple of years, I really want to hone the craft a bit more. Um, if I direct, um, I would probably want to do something that's a bit more personal, something that I've written and it might be a short film. Um, but, uh, for now it's, it's really about editing. Excellent. Is, is, is there like a specific genre that you prefer? Um, no, there's actually, um, like for editing, I, I really just want to do something that I haven't done before. So, so now that I've done a lot of sci-fi, I'm kind of leaning towards doing something different, like maybe a straight, just a straight drama or a horror or, um, uh, I mean, I would love to do comedy again. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun with Baroness. So, yeah, the, uh, you know, anything, anything with a great story with great characters. Is something like uh, I, I, I know it, it has nothing to do with you, but uh, but there, a lot of people don't realize there are great editors out there that make that basically push for great movies. And I'm going to list a couple, like Ford versus Ferrari, how they actually edit you know, both sound editing and, and video editing was, was amazing. Or um, 1917 would probably be yeah. a great, great example on, on the magic of edit because no, no one, no one, everyone thought that movie was just a one take movie when in fact yeah. that that was actually dozens. There were so of many, things. yeah, there were dozens of cuts in it and, it, and it's seamless and it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing how, Technology has has grown to to be able to make these seamless cuts. Excellent, excellent. Well, any anyways, I really appreciate uh, this conversation uh, with you, Nick. Um, this, Thank you. This, this this was very pleasant. Uh,